Welcome to another video. Yes, there is no way around it this time, so we finally made it to the first healer on this series. And like you had always guessed it, the white mage being my personal favorite healer so far, with many weapon choices available already, takes precedence. But of course, the other healers and missing jobs will follow very soon. And like always, share with us your personal favorites in the comment section to widen the range of possible glamour inspirations for the community. The first spot making it to number 10 is a very new weapon that had been released in 6.2 as being the shiny upgrade to the King's set found on Titania Extreme in Shadowbringers. This is a love it or hate it weapon in many regards as it has a very feminine design language and very like foundation that you need to like to wear it. However, for a white mage this is a top choice because wings are always fitting, no matter in which form they are manifesting. Other than that, the animations are very clean and the shiny morning dew effect emanating from the core of the weapon creates an interesting highlight as well. Oh, and butterflies circling around the whole weapon, which does also shift in RGB rainbow mode when being unsheathed, so definitely the eye catcher you might be looking for. And of course, this can be received from the market board or by crafting, but prepare yourself for a quite hefty price tag. The next one is actually the opposite when looking at the costs also receivable from the market board or by crafting. But it does fit more to the overall number of glamour sets I guess. But of course the wings make a return here as well, combined with a very subtle glow that doesn't overpower the beauty this weapon has to offer. So the cane of the goddess is a very solid option for the get cool white mage weapon fast and cheap approach. But when leaning more into the yellowish color section from time to time and in different lighting conditions, it is a very good choice overall. Which can be said about the Eden Choir cane as well, that can be received by participating in the 8th entry of the Shadowbringers Eden Raid in its savage difficulty level. And even if you can outmatch the boss's power level by going in with a full level 90 party, I do believe that it's still not a free win, so maybe check out a guide for this first. However, you are rewarded with a very subtle glow on the stuff part, followed by a playfully constructed headpiece that works very nicely with the white mage animations and appearance. And being a Shadowbringers weapon, the textures are also decent, so one of my favorite choices for minimalistic glamours. Nonetheless, as many of you have already pointed out, I am a fan of glow and shine, so moonlit and sharpened canes are the favorites of mine. But before coming to those, there is a true endgame endgame weapon ahead in the form of the Nirvana Zeta that is the final stage of the White Mage's Ram Reborn weapon. I know, the animations look quite dated, but according to your feedback there are many players that do indeed love this one. Maybe nostalgia or just the fact that they worked so hard for it, because the whole Zodiac Rally questline takes a good while to complete. So prepare for the grind ahead. On the other hand, this weapon is a good choice and if you don't have other contestants at hand, like the Ragnarok Zeta or the Excalibur Zeta, the Holy Branch design definitely gets my attraction and something I would look at when someone in my party moves in with that weapon. Which can be said about the Tsukuyomi's Moonlit Cane, bought from the market board or by using your crafting skills or those of others. And what really makes this a special caster weapon is the crescent moon style it is rocking on the top, plus one of the best glow animations around. Yes, we're looking at a color shift again, mixing purple and red into a very unobtrusive shine that you can easily match with basically any armor set you want to take into battle. And the fact that the crescent moon sickle does also glow is just the cherry on top. And even if this is not the highest ranked crafted or market board weapon on this list, it is very very close. Alright, before coming to the next one let me tell you that as a white mage you should ultimately do the anima quest line featured in the Heaven's Ward expansion and which can easily be done in under 4 hours if you plan your tombstone of poetics in advance, using my spreadsheet found in the video in the description. Because white mage in particular has some very cool weapons featured in that anima journey that might be of interest to you. The sharpened cane of the white Tsar definitely being a highlight though. Yes, you can even paint this weapon and make it black entirely for example, or just take the default red that weaves a very chaotic particle effect, but one that definitely calls out for prying eyes and makes you stand out to the competition. And even there, the story doesn't end entirely, as the white orb with planar waves circling around make this relic a top choice on my list, and one of my daily white mage choices that I personally wear. Above that, for those lazy with group content or the big grind later on, the stage for this weapon is easily achieved by grinding currency alone and can easily be solved with clean planning of poetic tombstones and before the big light farm step, so definitely go for this one if you haven't done already. Okay, my best white mage choice you can easily buy off the market board is the Dead Hive Cane. Not only that this is ultimately inexpensive, but it offers a passive glow when being on your back as well, which is very rare for non-ultimate weapons. So this is basically a fake ultimate weapon with a lot of good arguments. Yes, wings and butterflies are the main theme here again, and that is definitely a good one. And personally I like that it looks more raw and brutal than the face crown cane even though the textures are already a bit dated. 
I know, the fiery glow is definitely bad, but the stuff itself is just amazing. Without the fiery wave effect attached, but still having the butterflies and reddish glow would battle with the top 3 choices much more closely. But for now the podium is just too epic, to have acceptance for such a big design flaw, even if the weapon is strong overall. And from the fact that I play Sindri Lux, or this time the default Sindri version here, indicates how cool the final choices have to be, because I believe this had been considered the best fitting and most clean looking relic weapon for the white mage for a long time. Yes, fans of Harry Potter will love this as well, but using this together with your temperance is just the perfect extension of white mage animations and if they designed the spells look with Sindri in mind. To be clear though, I absolutely favor the standard version over the Lux one, due to the blue-white color mix fitting way better to the white mage spell colors. But even the Lux version looks cool. So if you already made it to the sharpened cane of white Tsar, it is not far anymore. Take the little extra effort and steps to get to this weapon and you already can rely on a vast arsenal of weapon choices for your white mage. But in the same way I was a fan of the black mage Shadowbringers relic in its final form, the white mage one takes the same good elements and places the famous Walmart crystals very nicely around the stuff. That also leads back to the white mage's origin as a conjurer. Oh, and we have butterflies again, the very cool wavy thorn energy around the shaft and a glow that is mild and beautiful. Maybe not the clearest form or something for purists, but I just love how so many different elements fit into the final piece of an awesome white mage stuff, the Blade's Mercy. Yes, the quest for it can be a bit difficult to complete due to a limited participation of other players that is kinda required here, and a very long grinding process, but for such a weapon it is definitely worth it. And that being mentioned, rank 1 is a weapon that I haven't put on this spot in the first place, if I'm totally honest. But after taking some closer looks at it and its competition, as well as the foundation it has in the Zodiac Relic entries, I have to grant it this spot. Yes, we're talking about the Thyrus Ultima, that you can receive by clearing the Ultima weapon Ultimate, which is considered the easiest of all Ultimates, but still a tough challenge at hand. However, this weapon brings with all the good elements of former choices, the glow that it already emanates on your back, which might actually be one of the best sheathed glows that you can find on any weapon. Furthermore, it resembles an angelic figure, so the wings topic is checked here, while the color scheme is the perfect white mage representation found in Sindri. Yes, the blue circles and magical spheres make it a bit chaotic, and if I'm totally honest, without this, these would have been a perfect white mage weapon with clear distance to the second place but it is still rocking just the right mix of everything a white mage is looking for. So gather your friends and beat these bosses to call it your own. But of course we cannot close this video without at least mentioning the other ultimate weapons, that aren't bad either, but you really need to like their style and I just think they don't fit too well with the white mage. And when mentioning T, the Abyssal's cane is not inside of my cup of it. It is just too flat and a bit boring, but I guess there will be players out there loving it. Also take a look at the Sario Sanctified Cane that I had on here but replaced with the other market board choices, as well as the Pyros Cane that is a cool weapon that just falls short because of the other relics being stronger. And last but not least, the Mandeville Cane that has some very good potential and I'm really excited to see the next stages of it. That's it for my top white mage weapon choices, so refer to the videos in the description to learn more about the weapons mentioned or how to get them, or if you're interested in the same video for other jobs or just true endgame in general. Thank you for watching and a big shout out to my patrons for supporting this channel, I highly appreciate your help from the bottom of my heart. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving Final Fantasy.